are that I do live in the most beautiful district of the country. <laughs> Gentleman from Kentucky is recognized for questions. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to agree that the WOTUS, the 2023 WOTUS rule is going to provide certainty. The certainty it's going to provide is if a drop of rain lands on your property, whether you have a, a stream or a river or a pond or not, the federal government is going to show up and tell you what you can and can't do by virtue of that water droplet, even a molecule of it appearing. That's eventually where we're going to end up. Uh, Ranking Member Larson, I've, I think you've been in Congress longer than I have, uh, but we've both been on the Transportation Committee at least 10 years, I think. Uh, and you're right. You said something in the beginning. This is, this is a game of ping pong, the WOTUS rule. There, was, there were rules under Bush, and then Obama came up with a different version of the rule, and then Trump came up with a different version of the rule, and now Biden's got his version of the rule. And my home builders and my farmers... They're just saying, I don't really care that much what the rule is. Just quit changing it on me because I can adapt as long as I know what the rule is going to be. And this is why the founders set up our system of government so well. I, although sometimes I feel like we're cavemen and we just dis been discovered. We're looking at an electric motor. We don't even have any concept of the beauty of what they've created. And their idea was that You'd have one branch that creates the laws, and then you would have a branch that enforces the laws, and then another branch to adjudicate disagreements. But w what we have here is the legislative branch has just given up all control over this law. But they didn't give it up, our, our predecessors, in 1972, to quote, Susan Bodine, who was the, uh, one of our witnesses in a hearing on this topic, on this very uh, bill that we're, we're talking about passing a resolution, she said, in 1972, Congress didn't tell the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers, do whatever you all think you need to do to protect uh, water. That was not the directive. There were, there were boundaries on it. And so instead of Congress reconvening and when there need to be changes, or maybe need to be changes, to debate this and, and debate what the, the law or the rule should be, we, uh, we're here arguing over what the executive branch did. Uh, and I think it's, I, I support what, what we're doing here, I support it completely, uh, which is to tell the executive branch, no, you can't have this new rule. Uh, our, our, constituents would be far better served if we followed the principle of we make the laws. Now, the, the minority, they were in the majority. You all had the, the, the committee of jurisdiction in, in both uh, lawmaking bodies. The White House could have made the changes that are in this and, and Biden's role that you uh, seem to like, could have made those changes but did not. And I, and I wonder why um, those changes weren't made. There's, let me ask you, Mr. Larson, because we, we were in the, uh, in the hearing again uh, together on this issue. Um, Ms. Bodine, who I've already quoted, she said something to me that was very concerning, and I want to know if you agree with her interpretation of the 2023 WOTUS rule or if you disagree with what she said, she said to support expanded jurisdiction over the 2023 WOTUS rule, the agencies claim isolated water can affect the integrity of navigable water. Uh, well, let's see, that's not exactly the page I, I wanted. Um, let me pull this up. They, they, they claim, the agencies claim that an isolated water can affect the biological integrity of a navigable water. So this is how they apply that significant nexus. They say the biological integrity of an isolated bit of water it will affect navigable water. And they use examples like salmon. But to understand what they really mean, you have to look at their technical support document. And the, that document, 
supports the 2023 WOTUS rule, reveals that the agencies believe they can claim jurisdiction over an isolated water if they determine that birds can fly from the isolated water to a navigable water and leave bird droppings that contain seeds of aquatic plants or they determine that beavers that live in an isolated water can move from the pond to a tributary of navigable water and leave scat that includes larvae of aquatic insects. The agencies call this dispersal. Is it true? Is she just making this up? Or is it true that the 2023 WOTUS rule would expand jurisdiction to include isolated bodies of water by establishing this biological nexus? Uh, I couldn't speak to what she said. Uh, uh, Mr. Massey, I, I, I don't know that. If She's making a claim. I will note that before the Bush administration adopted rules, uh, I kind of want to talk about the, the original sin, if you will, was the Supreme Court making um, <clears throat> not, not compatible but not incompatible decisions by creating two different tests in two different cases, Rapinos and Swank, which gave us this relatively um, uh, relative significance versus the nexus test. And then the Bush administration was trying to square a circle based on that, which then, uh, when we had the majority and the Democrats the majority in 2007, had a series of hearings on this to try to do what you just talked about. Why didn't, why didn't, why didn't the majority, the Democratic majority, do that um, in whatever year you mentioned? I'm, I'm talking about even farther back. Well, then, you could even say in 2010 or 11, the new Republican majority also did not address this when they had the opportunity. Um, and so I, I don't know that it's helpful to go back and say, why didn't you do something when we each, well, when each party had the chance to do them? I'll give you more point, time. Let me, let me respond I, to that. I understand you guys have plenty of time. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> yeah and I will, that's why, that's why I'm, I'm going to give you all you want. Uh, but, I, but I did uh, want to respond to that. Uh, it's because the Republican majority doesn't think they have the authority to do what they're doing. Not that we think they need more authority and that we would want to convene a meeting of this body and the other body and, and get a president to sign something to give them more authority. That's not necessarily, it's not my viewpoint. I can't speak for all of my party. But you make a fair point. So, so my, my, my basic point, Mr. Chair, is just this, that passing the CRA, passing this particular one to undercut the waters of the U.S. Uh, rule, um, creates uncertainty. It's essentially kicking it to a Supreme Court, the same institution that started things in the first place, and uh, for better or for worse. It's not a criticism of the court, but that's where it started. My only, so my point is, if you want certainty, we should stop the ping pong game and get on with things. Um, but that's not going to occur, uh, in my view, um, with uh, action to pass this, this particular CRA. So the waters of the U.S. rule is about clean water. That's what we're trying to get to. This, let me get back to my question. So, Ms. Bodine established that this water's... And here's, here's uh, the... She, she testified to that. I don't know if she established anything. Okay, she testified, she testified so I want you to comment on the veracity of her testimony. And if, and if we can't know what she said was correct or incorrect, then this thing's too fuzzy already. I mean, we are... The three of us here are on this committee. And if we can't even tell, then... How's the Army Corps of Engineer uh, commander in Louisville going to interpret it? And how's the one in Huntington, West Virginia, going to interpret it? Because they both have jurisdiction in Kentucky. And uh, how is the EPA going to interpret it? How will the state of Ohio versus the state of Kentucky interpret it? Because this is the other problem we have. When, when we pass fuzzy law and then the regulators pass a fuzzy regulations, it doesn't get applied evenly, even where the hydrology and, and the climate are similar. They're, the rule becomes two different rules in two different states or two different Army Corps districts. I'll just go back to what I said uh, earlier to the question is that um, if this passes under the, the underlying statute of the Congressional Review Act prevents the agencies from writing anything that is uh, similar, even close to um, what we already have or even had. To date, after 15, 16 years, no one has been able to magically concoct something that is substantially different um, uh, than, than the next administration. Different enough for us to have disagreements, but, but 
I don't see if, if the CRA passes how the agencies will have an opportunity to do what you're just doing is try to bring some consistent um, definition over time to a Waters of the U.S. rule. Let me ask my question differently. About I don't have a different answer, Mr. Chair. Well, I have a different question. And this one I think you, you could answer if you care to. If you don't, just tell me you don't want to answer it. Uh, <laughs> if Ms. Bodine were correct that the WOTUS 2023 rule uh, uses the biological connections of, of beavers that may drop scat or birds that have droppings that may have, uh, you know, uh, fish eggs in them or something, or that frogs can carry eggs from one pond to another, some kind of biological uh, plant. Uh, if she were correct that that is the intent of the 2023 WOTUS rule to use those biological connections, to expand jurisdiction, if that is correct, would you support it or not support uh, that portion of the 2020? I'll be voting no on the CRA on HR 20, on race 27. I'm, the reason I'm asking this question is it's the clearest example of some common sense thing that I heard in that hearing that my farmers back home can understand that they are you know, they are coming after, and I know farm ponds may be exempt, but let's say you're a home builder and you've got a pond in your neighborhood. They're coming after your pond. They understand that because anybody who's built a pond and left it there for two or three years knows that fish show up. You don't have to put fish in it. Now, you want to put the fish you want to be in it, but if you don't put fish in it, they show up. They get there because birds... And frogs and beavers do carry this stuff. So we know biologically all water is connected. It eventually gets connected somehow. Maybe it's through the rain. But um, that's what people are worried about. That's, that's one of the legitimate concerns that a witness in our committee expressed about this rule, how it could expand jurisdiction. And my folks back home were watching that saying, yeah, that happens in my ponds. I, I, you know, I can't. I, can't, I couldn't show up and testify that my pond's not biologically connected through bird droppings. We all know birds fly and do that. So um, they're rightfully concerned. And because they know, as Mr. Rouser said, they're going to be guilty until proven innocent. I, I had uh, a constituent who asked me, why can't we just do things, and as long as we're not polluting, why do we have to go say, mother, may I, to several agencies um, to, to get this approval? Um, is there anything I've talked about here, Mr. Rouser, Chairman? Or, sorry. No, I, I think you've hit all, all the real key points. I will say this. If this rule stays in effect, uh, farmers are going to have to go hire consultants like they've never had to hire before and lawyers and everything else. And it's just going to make uh, production agriculture that much more difficult when the margins are so thin anyway. And, um, you know, as far as the, um, uh, the ability of the administration to come forward with a, a new rule, there's nothing that prohibits that. For example, if they were to use the Scalia standard, and promulgate a rule based on that. There's nothing in this CRA that would prevent uh, common sense and logic from prevailing in an administration if they chose to pursue it. Um, so th those are my closing comments on, on that. So we, we once had um, a hearing on the WOTUS, two, two or three WOTUSes back in the Science Committee. Because not only is this Groundhog Day in the, in the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, it's, this WOTUS thing shows up in every committee. If you've been in Congress, you've seen it. And we had Gina McCarthy there at, in the Science Committee. And one of the questions I asked her is, can you do science without units of measure? Can you do science without numbers, without math? And she said that, you know, it'd be difficult uh, you know, like flow is gallons per hour, or you might describe a, a flood as a 50-year event, meaning probability-wise it happens once every 50 years. These terms of units and numbers don't show up in these rules. They are not in the rules. And what I heard here earlier from uh, one of our colleagues on the other side of the aisle and the minority witness is that the rules have to be stretchy. 
they have to uh, not faithfully apply in Kentucky because they've also got to apply in New Mexico. Uh, so that's what our constituents are upset about or concerned about. The, the rules in these rules, I, I think, uh, Mr. Rouser, you said they should be simple, clear, and easy to follow. They're anything but that. And there was just an argument made for why they can't be simple, clear, and easy to follow, because they have to cover all 50 states. Well, that sounded like a great argument for federalism. To me, that you, it sounded almost like when I heard the two talking that, oh, it's got to be uh, rivers that flow only occasionally, because that's what happens in five states in the West. But in Kentucky, when we talk about something that only flows occasionally, we're usually talking about a ditch or a, a stream so small that you would not cast a, uh, a fishing line in it because <laughs> you're not going to catch anything. You might catch crawdads in it, but that's about it. So uh, I think there's a reason that these things should be left, more of these decisions should be left up to the states. I think there's a reason that the definitions need to be clear, simple, and easy to follow. I think we've seen here today that we're, we don't even know exactly what this thing means. We've got to wait for the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to start trying to implement this, and then we'll find out what was the date, Mr. Rouser? This March 20th. March 20th. We're going to find out what it means. We, got, we have to allow this regulation to happen so we can find out what's in it. And that's concerning to me. Uh, and I don't think there's much more I can say about it, but I uh, thank you for bringing forward this. Thank you both for testifying. Try to keep the animosity to a minimum because I know I have to be in a committee with you this week. <laughs> and I yield back. Gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, this is real up close and personal with me. 